Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. So like a billion years ago, your boy Germa came up with this weapon concept for a grease gun flamethrower, where you'd lay a trail of grease that can either coat people to do extra flame damage, or lay a trap that can be lit at any time. Well, about a billion years later, Valve decided to add something very similar in the form of the gas passer a throwable item similar to the Gerardi in Mad Milk. Not quite the grease gun, but still, it's an interesting idea and it sucks. It just fucking sucks. German's idea of this item being a primary weapon worked better in concept because he was envisioning it as a combo weapon, and Pyro was kind of a combo class. He was fuzzy on the details of just what the grease would do once you were coated. Maybe you'd take extra fire damage from flares, or mini crits, or something like that. But Valve, when designing the gas passer, had a different idea in mind. The stats for this weapon are not quite as straightforward as its counterparts. So, unlike the Gerardi and Mad Milk, or pretty much any other consumable items in the game, like the Cleaver, the Sandman Ball, anything, you don't start off able to use this thing, and even more restricting, it can't be replenished by a resupply cabinet. Honestly, for something as powerful as the Gerardi and Mad Milk, I think this would be a good nerf because, let's be real, they're pretty easy to just spam out of your spawn once you're at a point where the enemy is close to your spawn, like a lot of defensive last point holds. This, on top of being able to throw it at the beginning of the round to win your team's mid-fight for free, are the main reasons these weapons are banned in competitive mode. And the gas passer almost seems like a test run for those attributes on a new weapon. The problem with this execution is the everything. Unlike the Gerardi and Mad Milk, unless you're using the Gerardi with the Sydney Sleeper, but we'll talk about that in its own episode, you can charge this thing up faster by doing damage. A good concept, but it takes 750 damage to get it back up fully from zero. Boy, that sure sounds like a lot, huh? And it is, especially without a damaging secondary. Pyro lives and dies by his secondary. More than any other class in the game, I'd say, except maybe Heavy, and with the exception of Medic, since his secondary is really his primary. So, essentially, removing it means you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. You don't have the reliability of the shotguns, the huge burst damage of the flare gun, the mobility of the detonator and jetpack, and the ability to make other players disconnect from the game that the squirt shit offers. But don't worry, it also recharges passively too. After an entire full ass minute. Talk about strict. So what the hell does this thing even do when you throw it? Does it insta-kill people? It better for all the fucking effort it takes just to get it charged up. <laughs> no. No. The gas passer, when thrown, leaves a haze of gas that lingers for five seconds. This is a big change from the Gerardi and Mad Milk because it means enemies are more likely to get affected by the debuff if you strategically place this in a choke point or another place where enemies are likely to funnel through one area quickly like the control point or a payload card. You can also use it on an area that retreating enemies are likely to fall back to. Enemies who walk through the cloud will begin to take afterburn damage upon taking any damage from any of your teammates during the time they're soaked, a period lasting for 10 seconds. This even includes enemy pyros who are normally immune to afterburn. Like the Gerardi and Mad Milk, this time is halved if they're being healed, and even if they do manage to take damage in that halved time, that afterburn time of 10 seconds is also cut in half. So, for 750 damage, or a full minute of wait time, you get to let your teammates potentially do about 80 damage per lit target. Maybe. Okay, let's talk about why this is really underwhelming. Afterburn has never been Pyro's strongest attribute. The damage over time effect he has isn't useless, 
but it's usually more of an annoyance than anything because there's so many things that can remove it entirely, or lessen the effects to the point where it may as well not even be there. Health packs, medics, other pyros, the Jurati and Mad Milk, dispensers, the payload cart, water on certain maps, the spy sickle, the dead ringer, healing weapons like the black box, the conqueror, the kunai or the katana, the danger shield, the demo knight shields, even the gas passer itself will extinguish your teammates. What? How does that even- and it doesn't count enemies as wet? How? And it doesn't even have a recharge buff like the other ones for when you extinguish someone. Why? Okay, so there's a lot of ways to counter Afterburn, and it takes way too long for the slow damage over time to run its course. This is true even of the flamethrowers, and WM1 is such a ubiquitous strategy because you can't just hit and run people as Pyro, it won't accomplish anything, and you're very likely to just die on the way out. You need to keep the stream of fire on them. This is also something that's very difficult to follow up on with the gas passer as a pyro. If the same effect was applied to, like Germa suggested, a primary weapon, then you could use your variety of secondary weapons to light up a large cluster of enemies at a distance. It would, I think, pair extremely well with the shotguns since the hitscan effect makes hitting even distant enemies easy, and chip damage would be more effective as it's now damage over time. But currently, the only way to do that is if you're lucky enough to find a shotgun on the ground next to you after you've thrown the gas. So we're working with what we have now. And with that said, it's difficult and useless to try and follow up on your own gas passer in most situations. Throwing the gas passer alerts the enemy to your exact position, not good for an ambush class, and it's best used on big groups to try and get the full effect. So as a pyro, it's really a bad idea to run up to a bunch of enemies that know you're coming for them. It's just about the worst thing you can do. And the end goal of this is to light them on fire with your flamethrower and do afterburn? Eh? This thing is only good as a support tool. There is absolutely no reason to try and follow up on it yourself. And even then, I'm playing it fast and loose with the word good there. Like I said, the afterburn effect is incredibly underwhelming, and it takes an insane amount of effort to gain exclusive access to this effect with the longest cooldown in the game and a painful damage threshold. Even if a teammate does decide to follow up on the gas passer's effects, the damage over time effect really only matters if your teammate loses, but it was a close fight and the enemy can't reach a health pack or medic in time. Pretty much the same as any other suicide running pyro. For close range encounters, it really doesn't mean much, so its best use is to enhance long range chip damage and either force a retreat or do some extra damage to enemies that are already retreating. And here's the thing, right? Like, like if you want a really easy way to light a big group of people on fire from a distance without having to worry about your brainless teammates, then why not just use the brainless scorch shit? Unless, of course, you're like me and actually care about the people you're playing against having fun. However, the same case applies to the Detonator, a weapon I absolutely adore. Long-range crowd control has been a thing for Pyro for a while, so why give Pyros a weapon that just does everything they can already do worse and slower for no real benefit? Like I said earlier, Enemies coated in the gas don't even count as wet, so you can't even use this as a combo tool with the Neon Annihilator. What the hell can you do with this thing? In order to use this weapon to its fullest effects, we're gonna have to be a bit creative. After doing a bit of testing, I found out that enemies that start taking Gas Passer Afterburn will actually charge the meter of the Flog, and because the Flog's guaranteed crits do so much fucking damage, it's a surprising degree of synergy as it allows you to throw the gas, charge your flog, go huge, and have more gas ready for the next one. Rinse and repeat. However, again, this is all assuming that your team follows up on the gas passer in the first place. If they can though, then it's kind of like the classic cancerous scorch shot flog combo, except it's actually fucking balanced. In order to do this most effectively, Play around classes like heavies and scouts who can easily follow up on your gas with their hit scan. If you see a heavy that's using the Huo Long Heater, that's even better. He'll be really grateful for that. 
The gas really doesn't last long enough to use it preemptively, so try to coordinate your gas throw with a confrontation. Like if you see a group of enemies coming, get ready to throw it once your team notices so that you can capitalize on it. Because this is such a team-oriented weapon, it might be best to use voice chat for this or even just to play with friends. If you want to use the gas passer for yourself, then there's still a couple things you can do. For starters, it's great for spy checking, and also for preventing spies from going down a certain path by blocking it off with the haze of gas, potentially cornering them. It's a gerati that lingers, so it's a given that it's good for spy checking, but as you're a pyro, you're already a natural spy checker yourself. With one exception, when you're using the Dragon's Fury. This flamethrower synergizes decently with the Gas Passer for a couple reasons. First of all, the spy checking. The Dragon's Fury's short bursts of fire and slow firing speed means that it's not a particularly effective spy checking tool, especially compared to the spray and pray of the other flamethrowers. And second of all, unlike the other flamethrowers, this one is not adept at afterburn. Its effects don't last very long before they go out, and that goes double for cloaked spies who have a natural resistance to afterburn. Using the gas passer before going into any fight can give you a big window of leniency for attacking a burning enemy, and really keep the pressure on them. And the sheer burst damage you get from dealing successive hits can actually charge up your meter fairly well. However, I feel I really can't overstate this. You can accomplish all of this much faster and much easier with the scorch shit or even the detonator. I recommend the detonator because I don't hate fun. Hell, if you're really ballsy, you can try the regular flare gun. If you're good with your shots, you can charge up your flog real quick, or even do more damage to your prospective Dragon Fury target before going in. Let's all be real with ourselves here. The undisputed best way to use the gas passer is in MVM. It's not as blatantly overpowered as it was on release, but it's still a good way to get rid of the many annoyances you'll find in MVM that classes like Sniper and Demo usually take care of thanks to the explosive upgrade. Once it's thrown, it's important to start doing some damage to get it charged back up quickly. Using the Flog, Backburner, or even Crit Canteens is an easy way to do this. Unfortunately, the Gas Passer Explosion effect doesn't charge up your Flog like the Afterburn does, so you'll have to do that damage yourself if you're using that tactic. My go-to on ways without tanks is the Backburner. Since you can camp yourself underneath the spawn point and get free crit damage when you're behind the robots. Also, any damage you do will charge up your gas passer meter, not just fire damage. So with the back burner, you can still reflect projectiles back at robots for some easy damage. The Dragon Fury is also good if you can aim with it, since it's good consistent burst damage that can get you charged up quickly. Hell, even doing damage to the tank will charge up your gas passer. Like anything in MVM, Knowing when to use the gas passer most effectively comes down to just playing the maps a lot. I have a bit more than 52 cities tours, and I've used the gas passer plenty to great effect. Not that I have any Australiums to show for it. Not bad. Unarmed combat and unarmed combat. Combat. Ah, that's not bad. Oh my god. It's actually not bad. I I, I think. <laughs> Imagine waiting years for new weapons to get added and one of them is this fucking thing. One of Jungle Inferno's two fart jokes. What a disappointing weapon. Even at its absolute best against real players, it's completely overshadowed by the Scorch shit. But then that applies to literally all of Pyro's secondaries because it's an overpowered piece of shit. I really wish this thing was good, so let's try to make it good. This weapon's kind of a blank canvas, but the concept is interesting, so there's a lot we can do with it. First of all, we can just give the gas passer the explosion effect in the normal game, not just MVM. It wouldn't be as powerful, obviously. Something around 50 damage might be balanced, and the current MVM upgrade would be renamed like Explosion Expert or something. This is something the high GPS balance mod has been trying out, and it's certainly interesting. If you want to do a little more with the afterburn effect to make it less underwhelming, then you can make it do more damage per tick, so it does more damage over time than the flamethrower, or make it deal its full burst of damage faster. If a pyro or a medic doesn't get to you in time, that has the potential to be pretty devastating. Something else I would do to give it the pyro using it more incentive to use it for himself is to make your flamethrower damage mini crit gas soaked enemies. That way, pyro can use it as his own personal gerati. Then you can lower the damage requirement and timer recharge to be reasonable, make enemies soaked in gas count as wet so you can combo it with the Neon Annihilator and let me festivize it, and this thing stands a chance of actually being pretty good. Oh yeah, and fix the bug where you can throw it through walls. 
I guess that was worth mentioning. We're unfortunately getting to the point of the show where usable weapons or ones with really good strategies are getting harder to come by. It might only get worse from here. Until then though, go give your enemies a gasoline bath and tell them fish sent ya. That's some shonky business right there.